before jumping into different biasing circuits, okay, first let me talk about uh, biasing. Okay, what is the meaning of biasing? Okay, so introduction of biasing is already been given um, in module one year, right? While dealing with uh, uh, diode circuit, so biasing, okay, is a process. Is a process of establishing establishing desired transistor currents and voltages desired transistor currents and voltages voltages okay so this is the definition of biasing so it's a process of establishing desired transistor currents and voltages so the word desired okay indicates that you will have a point you will have a point and this point is also called as operating point okay operating point so in your circuit what you are trying to create is an operating point okay and that operating point is being created with the help of biasing and this operating point indicates what it indicates currents and voltages okay so this operating point indicates indicates desired currents and voltages all right okay so in analog electronics as well as in power electronics this operating point is normally taken as the q point so operating point is called as q point operating point or you can also call it as q point sometimes you know in some literature this q point um, is also called as the quasin point quasin point okay the meaning of quasin okay the dictionary meaning of quasin is something like still or um, quiet something like that still or quiet something like that all right so that's the meaning of okay the quiescent point now as the name suggests quiescent means still the q point okay q point q point okay you know once the q point is set once it is set then it must not drift okay what's the meaning of drift drift means shift okay once the q point is fixed for a particular value of transistor voltage and transistor current it is supposed to stay on that point throughout the transistor operation it must not drift okay if it drifts then there will be uh, uh, you know the changes in the uh, transistor operation which is objection error okay all right so this is the introduction about uh, uh, the bias okay it's a process to establish desired voltages and currents it is called as is to fix the transistor currents and voltages once fixed it should not move okay okay if if the q point if the q point shifts shifts then the stability of the transistor stability of the transistor gets disturbed disturbed okay uh, the fag end of uh, uh, you know module 1b we will be uh, talking about the stability and what is the cause for uh, disturbance in stability the q point shift okay we'll talk about it uh, at the end of uh, you know the biasing chapter all right fine now let us study more about this operating point operating point okay. normally this particular question will come for Six marks to eight marks. Okay, explain the concept of operating point. Okay, definition of 
operating point. Remember, operating point is nothing but Q point. Okay. First, you can define the definition of operating point, which I have already defined. That's done. Okay, so I'll put a tick mark. Okay. Now, in order to explain the concept of operating point, first let me choose a biasing. Okay, so choose choose uh, a common emitter mode. Okay, you could even choose common base mode or you could even choose common collector mode. Okay, I'll go for common emitter mode because that's the most widely uh, used mode for, uh, you know, amplifier operation. All right. So what I will do, I will quickly draw the X and Y axis. So this is your current axis and this is your output voltage axis. Okay, so the current axis is normally expressed in millis of amperes and voltage axis is expressed in volts. Okay, now you have to quickly tell me in common emitter mode, what is the output current? Can you quickly type in your answers? In common emitter mode, what is the output current and what is the output voltage? I0 is equal to dash and V0 is equal to dash. IC is output, great. So I0 is collector current and what's the voltage? What is the output voltage? Output voltage is collector to emitter. So VC going to be the output voltage okay not vc vce because emitter terminal is common and collector is the output terminal remember one thing voltage is always measured with respect to two points okay what is voltage voltage is potential difference so it exists between two points all right fine so that's about your output current and output voltage now what we will do is let us consider the output characteristics Okay, the next task is to plot common emitter mode output characteristics. Okay, so common emitter mode output characteristics, um, you know, it takes uh, something like this. Okay, this shape it takes something like this I will draw. Okay. Uh, let's say this is the lowest base current. Okay, so these are your uh, uh, output characteristics. Okay, uh, I think in basic electronics you have already uh, studied. Okay, so let's say this is for IB is equal to say some 80 microamperes. This is IB for say 60 microamperes. So for different base currents, you know, you get different collector currents because that's the reason, you know, we call uh, BJT as a current control device. By controlling the base current, you can control uh, the collector current. Okay, so this is going to be, let's say, 40, and let's say this is 20, and the last current, okay, let me take IB as some very small value, which is, say, 5 micro current. Okay, fine. Now, let us also mark few regions here. Okay. When I say regions, okay, what you have to understand is that uh, the region which is very close to y-axis, let's say this region, okay, and there is a region, you know, which is very close to your x-axis as well. So let's say this region. So the region which is close to um, Y axis, okay, is called as saturation region. This is called as saturation region. Okay, what is the meaning of saturation? 
the meaning of dictionary meaning of saturation is like full okay i'm done with that okay my stomach is full we say right the same thing okay so so saturation means the current saturation almost you know maximum current you are uh, trying to uh, flow through the transistors okay so that's the reason it is called as saturation region and the lower region okay the region which is closer to x axis is called as cut off region cut off region cut off region means um, no operation region okay so basically in cut off region your voltages and currents you know tends to be uh, zero there all right fine and the region okay which is found at the middle of the transistor output characteristics uh, is called as the active region okay so this particular region is called as active region active region okay now why these regions are so important okay okay regions of operation let me write okay okay now we have seen that um, there are three regions region closer to y axis there is a region which is closer to x axis and there is also a region you know which lies almost at the center of the output characteristics okay now the active region active region is also called as the linear region active region is also called as the linear region and in this linear region your transistor transistor operates as an amplifier as an amplifier what do you mean by an amplifier an amplifier is a device which will uh, convert a low amplitude input signal into a high amplitude uh, output signal so it uh, increases the signal level okay so if your task is to enhance or increase uh, the signal strength then you must operate the transistor in the active region that means to say the q point should be at the center of the load line so this should be the position of q point okay so for amplifier operation the operating point okay let me say qi okay which is called as q point should be placed at the center of the output characteristics okay output characteristics okay and there is also something known as the load line okay let me draw that load line load line is nothing but a straight line which connects uh, the y intercepts and the x intercepts okay so let's say this is your load line all right so this is your load line okay. so this is your uh, y intercept so value of y intercept is ic max which is called which is given by vcc by rc okay and the value of x intercept okay this is called as vce max okay which is equal to the power supply voltage vcc how i will tell you in the future classes okay as of now you just uh, consider that ic max and vc max that's what i want you to uh, remember okay ic and vc max fine so for amplifier operation you place the q point at the center of the load line okay um right am i missing something here yeah that's all okay now the question is how to bias this region in the sense okay i can put it in i can frame my question in different way also in order to achieve amplifier operation what is that a designer should be doing so the designer should do something like this the input circuit input circuit of amplifier ok 
Okay, or rather, can I say input circuit of biasing? Okay, input circuit of biasing network and output circuit of biasing network should be forward biased. Should be forward biased. So when we forward bias both the input circuit as well as the output circuit, you can get or you can expect an amplifier operation. All right. Now in the amplifier operation, um, the waveform, okay, the output waveform, the current and voltage waveform uh, looks something like this. Okay. okay. All right. So what are the coordinates of Q point? Coordinates of Q points are some ICQ and some VCQ. Okay, these are the coordinates of Q point. Let me write coordinates of Q points are ICQ, comma VCEQ. Okay, so this is VCEQ. Okay, and this is ICQ. This is ICQ. Are you following? Yes or no? Okay. So input circuit is forward bias and output circuit is reverse bias. Then your circuit behaves like an amplifier circuit. So let, let me quickly tell you how exactly the circuit looks like. Okay, let me also draw the load line. I'll tell you, I'll teach you how to draw the load line in the future classes. Okay, fine. So, this is your IC and this is your VCE. Okay, so we are under the impression that we have fixed the Q point at the center of the load line. Okay, so this is our QI. Okay, now in order to plot a waveform, what you have to do is you have to consider two equidistant points, one above the Q point and one below the Q point. Okay, so these are the two equidistant points. Okay, your AC signal, you are trying to, you know, make the AC signal to go above and below this particular Q point, right? So this is the projection drawn from the respective points. Okay, and here is our projection. Okay, the same projection. Let me uh, do on the voltage axis also. All right. So this is your base signal. Okay. So when you apply a sinusoidal base signal, you will get a sinusoidal current of this kind. And similarly, you know, you will have a sinusoidal voltage of this kind. Okay. So the center point is your ICQ because it is current axis. Similarly, the center point going to be we see Q because it is your voltage axis. So coordinates of Q points are ICQ comma VCE Q. Okay. So since it is, you know, the figure itself is uh, uh, self-explanatory, right? Whenever you fix the Q point, you know, your output current will be a 360 degree cycle and your output voltage going to be a 360 degree cycle. Okay, this is called as faithful amplification. Okay. Amplification. Okay, in the sense, 
whenever the Q point is set at the center of the load line, a complete 360 degree output cycle is available. Okay. Hence, your output will not have any distortion and that is what is required for amplifier. And the amplifier should not consisting of any distortion. Okay. So this is your first region of operation. Now let us look at the second region of operation, which is called as, let's say, um, saturation region. So active region, we are done. Next, we will go to saturation region. Okay. Now for saturation region, um, let me take orange color. Okay. So I'll go back to our main graph. Um, what I will do, let me take Q point somewhere here. And let me name this Q point as Q double I. Okay, single I for active region, double I for saturation region. Yeah, so double I. Okay. Um, so in case of saturation region, okay, in case of saturation region, as you have, as you can clearly observe that the Q point is placed very close to Y axis. Okay. Due to which what happens is that um, the current value, if you look at the current value, you will find that current is very, very high. On the other hand, if you look at the voltage value, the voltage will be very, very small. Okay. So voltage is very small and current is very high. So what kind of circuit scenario it uh, exhibits? So in saturation region, you want me to recreate the graph? I can do that. So what I will do, quickly let me recreate the graph. Okay, you have to be a little patient. Okay, that's because I'm using this writing tab. Okay. Okay, and one more axis let me draw quickly. All right, I'm done with my axis. Now let me quickly rename IC, PCE. Let me also draw the load line. Okay, and let me place the Q point as well. So somewhere here, I have placed my Q point and let me name this Q point as Q double I. Okay. Now let me take out the coordinates. Okay. So this is your X coordinate and this is your Y coordinate. Okay. So let me write ICQ and let me write VCEQ. Okay. So ICQ comma VCEQ are the coordinates for the Q point, right? Now, your ICQ, okay, if you were to compare the ICQ value, you can write that ICQ is very high. On the other hand, if you look at VCQ value, VCQ value is very close to the origin and origin is at zero volt level, right? So can you say VCQ is very close to zero volt? Okay, I'm not saying exactly it is zero volt, close to zero volt I'm saying. So your ICQ is high and VCQ is, um, you know, almost zero. So this particular circuit scenario resembles dash circuit, open circuit or short circuit. Can you type in your answer? Current is high, voltage is zero. This is called as short circuit scenario. Okay. So short circuit scenario as in, let's say you have a switch. Okay. You have a switch. Now, in case, if you close the switch, what, you, what happens? You get a short circuit. So this is called as short circuit. So in case of saturation region, in saturation region,
the transistor behaves like dash the transistor behaves like a closed switch a closed switch okay so even you can use a solid state device uh, to replace a mechanical switch okay mechanical switch works on um, human force right on the other hand the solid state switch uh, can be given with uh, you know intelligence okay that means to say uh, computer controlled uh, uh, intelligence can be given and it can be operated uh, at will okay you can make it as a closed switch or you can make it as an open switch so if you use a transistor you must know the fact that if at all you want to make the transistor to work as a closed switch uh, you have to operate the transistor in saturation region all right so that's the meaning of um, saturation region so you can operate the switch in closed mode okay finally let me go to the third mode which is called as the cutoff mode or cutoff region rather cutoff region now what is this cutoff region as i have shown in the main graph that the cutoff region is the region which is closer to uh, your x-axis all right so let's pick up a point in the cutoff region okay let's say okay some refreshing color will take um, some rainbow color all right okay fine so let me take the cutoff region somewhere here okay this point i have taken yeah, this is not visible I use white color. This is my cutoff region Q point. Okay. And let me name this point as Q triple I. Q triple I. Okay. So where is our Q point? Our Q point is very closer to the cutoff region. Let me draw the axis. okay and uh, let us also draw the load line somewhere here all right let us mark the axis this is ic this is vce all right now let us place the q point okay so where where are we going to place the q point we are going to place the q point um very closer to the cutoff region okay so this is your q triple i okay so q point is placed closer to x-axis i would say x-axis because that region itself is cut off closer to x axis okay now if you look at the coordinates Okay, if you look at the coordinates, you are uh, x coordinate is VCEQ and your y coordinate is ICQ. Okay. Now if you look at the coordinates, okay, and this is VCE saturation, okay, or VCE max which is equal to VCC, the power supply voltage. Okay, your VCEQ is high, correct? Because it is towards the right-hand side. So your voltage is high. On the other hand, your current, this is zero ampere at the origin, your current is approximately equals to zero. I'm not saying it is zero. I'm saying it is close to zero because current value is negligibly small, okay? So by fixing the Q point closer to cutoff region, we observe that voltage VCE is very high. Okay, and approximately it is equal to VCC. On the other hand, your output current IC or rather ICQ is close to zero amperes. Okay, so voltage is maximum, current is zero. Which uh, circuit scenario? Current is zero, voltage is maximum. What kind of circuit scenario it resembles? Open circuit. Open circuit, great. So this is nothing but your open.
See, super cool, right? The transistor, you can make the transistor to work as an amplifier, okay? Or you can make your transistor to work as a switch. So in, in place of mechanical switch, you can use a solid state switch, okay? So this can be shown something like this, okay? In the previous class, what I will do, yeah, I have put the arrow direction, right? It is towards the closing side. Okay, here, what I will do, it is away from the closing side. Okay, so this is your open switch representation. Open switch, and this is the equivalent circuit. Equivalent circuit. So this is open circuit. So current is zero voltage is maximum voltage is maximum okay now you understood right the purpose of biasing so by properly selecting a q point the designer can uh, uh, make the transistor to work either as an amplifier or as a switch in switching operation there are two states off state and on state okay so in switching operation in switching operation, there are two states. Okay, there are there is no other fuzzy state, all right. Only two states: on state or off state. For on state, keep your Q point in saturation, or in short, you know, we say sat region. For off state, keep your Q point in cutoff region. Cutoff region. Okay. Now the question is: who is going to keep that Q point? And how are you going to keep that Q point in saturation at active region? How? Using biasing. Okay. So this being the basic or the introduction for biasing, we can visualize, okay, uh, different biasing circuits. Okay. So biasing is a very powerful technique to uh, fix the Q point. All right. Fine. Any doubts still now? You can just uh, discuss. Feel free. Any doubts you can discuss. Okay. How to bias switching region? Because I have already spoken about how to bias uh, the active region, right? For active region, what is that you should do? Where I have written, somewhere I have written, right? Yeah. For active region, Input of the biasing network and output of the biasing network both should be forward biased. Sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Okay, input of the biasing network. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Is forward biased. Okay. And output should be reversed biased for amplifier operation. Okay, should be this is reverse biased. Okay, please make a correction in your notebook as well as. Okay, input is forward biased and output is reverse biased. Okay. Okay, how to bias switching region? Okay, so for off state, for off state, what you have to do is input circuit should be reversed biased and output circuit should also be reversed biased okay for off state you want both the circuits are in reverse biasing mode on the other hand for on state you want both the circuits in on state i mean forward biasing mode so input circuit is forward biased and the output circuit is also forward biased All right and let me just recall the previous uh, you know statement 
for amplifier operation for amplifier operation input is forward biased but the output is reverse biased okay so this is the um, uh, take away okay this is the summary this is the summary okay now in exam if let's say if they ask explain the concept of operating point what you have to do is first you have to explain what is operating point and then you can explain the three different regions of the operating point okay three different regions of the operating point this point should have been here all right should have been here 